Hey there, welcome to the video. I hope you're having a great day. And today I am designing some new leaf bugs. Uh, because it's fall, um, or autumn, if you will. And lately I was thinking about the leaves, as you do. And I started thinking about leaf bugs, as you do. Um, and I know that there are many bugs that try to look like leaves, but specifically I was thinking about I think the the called walking leaf bugs is kind of the official common name for these guys. You know, the ones that you find in Animal Crossing that you catch with your net. But as I was thinking about them, um, I started to wonder, why don't we have leaf bugs that look like all kinds of different types of leaves? Um, as far as I could tell, these leaf bug guys only really look like one type of leaf. Um, and they're pretty cool, like they do a very good job at it. And uh, normally I don't like bugs too much, like I don't, I don't like them touching me, I don't like them in my house. But, um, you, know, you gotta give props to the leaf bugs and the stick bugs of the world. They do a pretty good job. And I think there should be more of them. I think we need leaf bugs for all the different types of leaves. And I decided I wanted to design some new ones. So that's what we're doing today. And for the first one, you probably already guessed it. We all know them. We all love them. The classic maple leaf. I mean, what's more appropriate for fall, right? And for me, at least, the, the maple leaf shape is kind of the, the classic quintessential leaf shape that I think about when I think about leaves. So of course I gotta do that as my first one. So my strategy to design these guys was to first draw the leaf itself, um, just to get a feel for how it looks and how it's shaped, um, then design the bug around it. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that's the strategy I took because it made it really easy to get the, the bugs looking like the leaves. Um, I don't know how it would have turned out if I just started drawing the bugs off the cuff. Um, having the leaf in the background was just, I think, the easiest way to get these guys looking looking right. And another reason to have started with the maple leaf, or at least another reason to be glad I started with the maple leaf, was that I think its shape lended itself really well to looking like a bug. It's got all the points that lined up pretty well with the, the legs. So this is a very good one to start out with, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out, honestly. I think um, it was one of the more leafy looking ones, and just a good one to, to get a feel for how to do this. Actually, I guess the very first thing I did uh, before this, you saw it, was I, I drew, um, I guess, the leaf bug that we have in this world. <laughs> and um, of course, using references, because otherwise it would have been complete crap if I had tried to draw that out of my imagination. Um, yeah, that really helped to have um, that drawing on the side that helped me get a feel for like the structure of these guys and like how how they are built and what I can work with to get them to look like different shapes. These guys have um, very fleshy, well, I don't know if fleshy is the right word, but their limbs are really like designed to emulate um, like kind of the shape and like feel of like leaves and that's what really helped me get the design looking right because I was able to take um, sort of those shapes and exaggerate them and alter the shape to look like what I wanted them to look like. I think evolution needs to to get on it. Come on, you've got a lot to work with. Got a lot of leaves to look like. <laughs> we need we need more leaf bugs. Leaf bugs, not other bugs. I don't like other bugs. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the yeah the bugs also have these very large abdomens and then they almost have like a, a flap over the top of their abdomens that also help emulate the leaf look and um, I really utilize that um, to um, get the shape that I want. So yeah, I'm just cleaning up the lines now. Um, my strategy for line work is kind of messy. Um, I don't know if it's slower than if I had just inked over the top of my sketch, but I tend to draw a sketch um, and then just take the sketch and turn it into the final line work. Um, I am absolutely crap at inking over sketches, and what I found is that you don't have to do that. At least with digital art, it's, it makes it much easier to really like work those lines and clean them up and make them look how you want to. So um, that's helped me immensely. Even though I think it's a little bit, it might be a little bit slower, but I always end up with lines that I'm decently happy with. Um, because I, I start with that messy sketch and I don't really worry about getting um, the lines looking perfectly good again um, on top. Um, I just clean up the lines and it, you know, ends up looking pretty good. I think that's one of the reasons why I 
really gravitated towards digital art. Um, and I still love sketching in my sketchbook. Um, and I guess you can do the same strategy with a sketchbook if um, you know, you're drawing with, with pencil that you can erase. If you're drawing light enough lines, um, you can kind of erase the lines. Um, but if you want to ink, you still have to go over that with ink. Um, and if I'm drawing with pencil, like I can never draw light enough. Um, I guess maybe I should invest in like actual light, like hard hard pencils. I just kind of use mechanical pencil. Um, but I always end up with, um, you know, the shadow of um, the pencil because I always draw too hard and then when I try to erase the lines um, it never quite erases completely so it's much harder for me at least to clean up lines um, in my sketchbook um, digital art though you've got your eraser tool and you can erase away you can erase anything you want um, and for me personally I think that's just you know digital art is really just what speaks to me because um, I can do stuff like this and uh, when I'm sketching my sketchbook, I've actually gravitated towards just using a pen to sketch with. Um, that way I don't feel like I have to like erase. Well, I can't, I can't erase anything, so if I mess up, um, I just have to redraw the thing. And I think that really helps um, kind of cement um, whatever it is I'm trying to draw. Because um, you have to draw it over and over again to get it right, instead of obsessing over um, erasing lines and getting that one line perfect. Um, so I think my preferred strategy is actually sketching first um, to get the feel out, just get myself to like understand what I'm trying to draw, um, and then transfer that to um, digital uh, once I have a feel for it, and then I can buck with all the lines like this. Um, and I did try to draw some leaf bugs in my sketchbook, although actually this is the first time I've drawn some really good leaf bugs um, in practice for this. Um, they just didn't turn out very well in my sketchbook. Um, drawing the leaves didn't turn out very good. I didn't practice very much. I kind of just decided to dive into this and luckily it worked this time. <laughs> okay, leaf number two is the ginkgo leaf. This is actually the the last leaf I came up with to draw. Um, I had the maple leaf and then the other one that I will do next already in mind, um, but I really felt like I needed to do three. Um, three is a nice number. But uh, there, there are so many different types of leaves, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I was going on a walk um, around my neighborhood and I passed by a ginkgo tree and it was dropping its leaves for the fall. And that's how I got the idea. I thought, oh, it's a cool shape. That might be really fun to try and figure out how to get that to look like a bug. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had some trouble figuring out how to get this to look like what I wanted to. Um, the shape of the leaf doesn't really lend itself very well to um, at least the bug shape that I was going for um, here with my example. Um, I'm sure there's all kinds of bugs that could look like this, but what I was really trained to do was um, sort of shape um, the walking leaf bug into these different shapes. And ultimately what I ended up doing um, was making it look like two leaves, as you can see. Um, making a smaller one overlapping um, the bigger one on top. And uh, that really helped because now the, the top leaf um, is kind of placed where the the middle pair of legs are and then the bottom pair of legs can kind of help outline the top of the bigger leaf um, so that's what it helped a lot uh, getting this guy looking the way I wanted it to look it was still a little bit of a challenge but um, I felt like an easier challenge um, I also utilized that um, abdomen flap I guess the best way to say it it's kind of gross sounding um, but that really helped um, get the shape right, like the, that did a lot of the heavy lifting in um, forming the shape. Um, these top legs I really struggled with as well, um, they are kind of in the way. Um, I didn't think that looked good if they looked like part of the leaf, like it felt like the middle leaf, um, or rather the middle legs were for that top leaf and the bottom legs for the bottom leaf. Um, what it ended up doing was I really liked what I did. Um, and I decided that this guy, when he's in um, a resting state, um, he sticks one leg up like that, all the way out, and then he tucks the other leg in, and that's meant to emulate the, um, the stem of the leaf. I think it ended up looking really cute. <laughs> Looks like he's got a little dress on, and I think it's very cute. I like what this one ended up looking like. And yeah, I think it was a little struggle to figure out um, still though, once I had the shape even, um, just kind of trying to like 
uh, mold that shape to look like a passable, um, you know, leaf, like a ginkgo leaf. Um, you know, the ginkgo leaves have all these folds, and um, they're not just a semicircle. I mean, they mostly are, but um, they've got, you know, like folds and creases and things, and I um, was really trying to emulate that. Um, like here, I can see uh, making, um, kind of trying to emulate those folds. Um, and it was easy, again, in the the dress part, I guess, the abdomen part, um, to kind of shape that. That was basically just drawing a, a ginkgo leaf on top of it. Um, maybe it was a little bit of a cop-out, I guess, but um, I don't think so. I think when you look at a, a regular walking leaf, they have that huge, um, basically, leaf on their back. So, if anything, the bug did the cop-out, not me. I am just copying the bug, <laughs> and the bug is copying the leaf. And that's my excuse. <laughs> Um, I mean, ultimately the goal was just to make some cool looking leaf bugs. I wasn't trying to get super fancy, and I liked it. I think I did a good job. Um, my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, so messing with legs, I quote unquote cheated. <laughs> I was trying so hard to get the second leg to look like the, the one that's sticking out, but, you know, proportionally I wanted it to look the same. Um, and I couldn't, so I just ended up copying the top leg, um, or the, the right leg and just using the the transform tool um and that really that really worked um like seriously don't don't forget about the transform tool when um doing digital art it seriously can help um and it's not cheating whatsoever i was joking earlier obviously um but yeah the everything available in digital in like a digital drawing um program is there for you to like help you make art like there's no cheating there's no cop-outs. Um, whatever helps you draw and get the image that you want, um, use it. No shame. Um, I think the, the transform tool is one of the, the least offensive things to be saying this about, but um, I don't know. I think there's there's discourse about whether digital art is like real art or whatever, and of course it is. You know, it's a tool to help you draw, and whatever features it comes with is there for you. Use them with no shame. <laughs> And now I'm just messing with the lines again, just cleaning them up. Pretty happy with the shape that I have. Um, I think I do go back and like uh, update the, the middle legs a little bit because they kind of stick out a little bit further than I wanted to. But um, I did notice that I, I think for all of these, at least for the first two, the maple and now the ginkgo, um, the legs kind of ended up being quite long. Like if you think about like the body underneath <laughs> this, the leaf, you know, form. Um, he's got he's got some long legs, and that's not a bad thing. Maybe they they need the long legs to, you know, get the illusion across. And for my design, I can't imagine having the legs be shorter because then they'll just be hidden. Um, I guess that's the real cop out. Just make the legs real short and just have the abdomen do all the work in making it look like a leaf. Um, didn't want to do that. Um, who knows? Maybe these guys stick to like trunks, or maybe they need the broad legs to stick on a leaf. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, here, uh, yeah, I'm making the middle legs um, a little bit smaller um, to kind of fit with the illusion that they're part of that top leaf. I do still think that, um, I think I could have done a better job at those middle legs. Um, I still look back at those and think that they could have done a little bit better at looking like a whole leaf, but that's yeah, okay. Oh no, okay, I went back to the maple leaf because I was thinking about it. It was after I stopped drawing for the night, and I thought that those leaves could be a little bit pointier um, to kind of form the shape better. Oh, and the mandibles were too long, the eyes were too small, blah blah blah, so I got all that cleaned up. Okay, now leaf number three is pine needles. <laughs> so yeah, this one's a little different. Um, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and I felt a little bit obligated because we have evergreen trees all over the place and I love evergreen trees um, so I was like I gotta do I gotta do pine needles it's not very fall themed but um, I really liked the concept and really wanted to see what I could do with the idea that, a, that we have a pine needle leaf bug <laughs> I went into this really not knowing exactly what I was gonna do I had an idea um, but you know that was the point of the challenge so if I'm being completely honest, um, I actually didn't really even think about pine needles as leaves until 
pretty recently. My mom and I were on a vacation in Florida, and we were looking at the, um, they have all of these long leaf pine trees around. Um, they're pine trees, but they get really long needles. And I was like, why don't they call them long needle pine trees? Because they have needles, not leaves. So I was looking it up, doing the old Google on my phone while we were in, while we were in the car. Um, and needles are technically a type of leaf, is what I found. And I don't know how much of that is like a well duh moment, like of course they're leaves, but I just always thought of needles and then they're leaves, and I didn't think of those two as the same, but like when you think about it, um, they serve the same function, right? Needles and leaves both collect sunlight, um, they breathe, you know, breathe in CO2 and produce oxygen, um, but there are just different advantages and disadvantages to needles versus broad leaves. Um, needles can withstand cold a lot better than broad leaves, which is why up north, you know, you'll find, you know, vast forests of pine needle trees and not very many um, deciduous trees, but the broad leaves are much better at capturing sunlight, um, and so they thrive much better in the warmer climates where there's a lot of sun to capture, but the leaves are a lot more delicate, and so they die out in the cold weather, which is why they drop in fall. And I think I even read that pine, pine needles are the more primitive type of leaf, like trees evolved pine needles first, and then the broad leaves that we know as deciduous trees um, came later, um, which kind of makes sense. It's kind of easier to flatten out a pine needle than it is to take a broad leaf and make it into a, a needle. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really fascinating, um, and it's kind of why I thought about pine needles when I was thinking about this challenge and what else I wanted to do um, was I took my recent newly gained knowledge that pine needles are leaves, and I thought, well, let's have a pine needle leaf bug. <laughs> So anyway, um, I'm actually not completely happy with how this one turned out. Um, I think if I gave myself a lot more time to work on it, um, I would have been much happier, just because this one required a lot more detail. Um, you know, a bunch of pine needles um, has an extra dimension than a flat leaf. I was trying to make it look literally like a frond of needles. Um, and again, if I had a, a lot more time to kind of like mess with it, um, I probably could have gotten something that, that I liked a lot better. Um, but this was the last one I draw. It was in the evening. I didn't want to spend hours on this. Um, so I ended up simplifying it quite a bit, which you can kind of already see happening, the, the abdomen part of the bug. Instead of having needles on the top and the sides, I just kind of went with the flat, you know, needles on the sides um, and didn't bother trying to create that more 3D look. Uh, with needles coming out the top. I went into this thinking that this was my favorite idea, and it, in terms of concept, it was my favorite concept, um, but I think I ended up not liking this one as much as the other two, um, because it just didn't really quite turn out um, to what I had in my head. But that's okay, I am still happy with it, like I'm not unhappy with it. Um, it just could have been a lot more um, and I think this one kind of turned out more looking like a stick bug instead of like a leaf bug. Um, but honestly, you know, I think both leaf bugs and stick bugs are... I, I didn't look this up, but I think they're related. I think they're of the similar family um, of bugs that disguise themselves to look like other things. I was trying to do research uh, uh, into um, what the baby form of leaf bugs look like. I thought they had more of like a larva, like when I think of baby bugs, I think of larva. Um, and I was looking up like baby leaf bugs and I kept getting results for stick bugs instead. Like I could have had a hard time researching like the life cycle of leaf bugs specifically, which is why I think that leaf bugs and stick bugs are probably maybe the same, very closely related you know, type of bug. Which makes sense, like, they do very similar things. They're both pretty good at disguise, and the leaf bugs only really need to, like, just change their shape. Really, they gotta grow out all of these fleshy parts, um, and that's kind of all they need to do to make themselves look like leaves instead of sticks. But, um, oh yeah, getting back to the life cycle thing, um, turns out they have a nymph phase instead of a larva phase, 
So when they hatch, they kind of just like little tiny versions of themselves instead of actual larvae. Um, that's the lesson I learned today. And we're learning all kinds of things on this video. Or I am, I don't know how many people. <laughs> Maybe this is all common knowledge that I just don't know about. Um, okay, yeah, so I got all the three designs done and I wanted them to be part of the same image. Like I didn't really want to have three different images. I wanted like one image with these guys just kind of artfully put together. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to feel out um, how they look. And now we're on to the coloring. Pardon me for cutting out a bunch of footage there. I was just filling in the colors um, and it was kind of boring um, to watch, I think. Um, my way of filling in is just very manual, just go in and color in all the spaces. Um, and then what I do with the shadows and the colors is I lock the, um, the layer um, so that I can only draw on the colored space and then I just add in highlights and shadows. And for this drawing, uh, so I did, I did speed up the footage for the coloring, um, hopefully it's not too obvious, but um, it's a little choppy, sorry about that. But I didn't really want to focus on the coloring, the, the whole point of this was really just to design the shape of the bugs, um, and the coloring was just to make it look pretty, so um, I kind of didn't want this section to be too prominent. Um, also this video was getting kind of long and I'm still kind of a newbie at this and I don't want to have to talk for an extra 10 minutes to figure out what to say. So um, I'm pretty happy with the colors. Uh, I do kind of wish, I, I went for more of a, this is obviously kind of a fall themed video, and I kind of wish I had made the ginkgo leaf a little bit more yellow. Um, the the leaves that I passed by on my walk were all yellow, like once they dropped um, they had stopped looking green, um, but I went with more of like a green, like a live, a live leaf green, and I do really like the color, I just, you know, for the fall theme I kind of wish I had went with um, more of a fall yellow here, uh, which would have looked a little bit better with the other colors because we have a green with the, the pine needle bug. Um, but that's okay, it's a different enough. It's it's yellow-green, you know, it's not completely green. So it was okay. And let's see, uh, I think I'm in the middle of coloring in the lines right now. Um, I've really gotten into the habit of coloring in my lines to make sort of a lineless look. Um, that was something that when I discovered that like I could like color the lines in, I was like, wow, that's amazing. You don't have to have black line art. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that like, Obviously, duh, like with digital art, you can just color in the lines whatever color you want, but I just, I was so stuck in like doing black line art for a long time that once I discovered that I could like lock the layer and change the lines to different colors, it was like a big breakthrough moment for me. <laughs> as dumb as maybe that sounds, but um, if you really want that lineless look, that's a great way to go. Um, I've gotten too much into the habit of doing the outline. Um, filling in the color, um, and then once, if I if I try to get rid of the lines, um, it's just kind of messy around the, the edges, um, and it's just so much easier to just keep the lines in, but color them to make them look like um, the color next to it. It could be a little bit of pain, um, especially trying to color match, like next to where you have highlights or where you have shadows. Um, sometimes it's not super clean, it takes a little bit of messing around with it, but um, ultimately, um, if you get enough practice in, um, you can get it looking good. Not at all just trying to say that I'm a master at this, I have a long way to go, um, but I think that's that's my favorite strategy, strategy so far, is to do that. So here I'm coloring in the legs of this guy to kind of look like the stems um, of the leaf. Uh, I kind of wish I did the same on the Inca leaf. Um, not that I don't think the ginkgo leaf doesn't look good, but I think I could have colored the leg parts a little bit darker to make them look more like stems. Um, oh well, that's okay. Moving on to the pine needle leaf, the last final one. Um, decided to make the body look like um, like an actual stem. Um, I got that brown from taking the green that I had and the red orange. Um, from the maple guy and uh, combining them, and I think that turned out really well. Um, I got a really nice brown. Um, I'm doing the same with the highlighting. I don't know how obvious it is. This is going kind of fast. Um, I basically picked uh, one yellow for the highlight, and then I took the base color and I took that yellow um, and I blended them for each bug. 
um, and I think that's a great way to get a highlight um, that kind of matches both the color of your source light and the base color of whatever you're drawing. Um, it just usually, for me at least, it ends up with a really nice, a really nice uh, highlight. And for these guys, um, to get the colors to kind of be cohesive between all three, um, using the same highlight um, yellow, um, just blended with the color that I'm working with, um, I think really helps uh, make these guys look very similar. And for the shadow, I just take the base color and I just darken it. Um, it's lazy, and I've, I've heard of people um, using like different colors uh, to shadow with. Um, like I guess I could have maybe used a kind of blue here. I've tried that before. I would like to try it again. Uh, it's never really worked out for me. Um, it always ends up with colors looking a little bit muddled. Um, obviously there's a way to do it because I see people doing uh, pieces that look amazing with that strategy. Um, it's just something that I need to work on for myself. But that's okay. Maybe that's for a future project is to try different shading techniques. And once I'm done looking back at these guys, once the final coloring is done, um, I do think they kind of ended up looking a little bit plasticky. Um, not really in a bad way, like I don't not like it. Um, you know, I was not focused on details at all, I was just trying to get a nice color in so that they looked decent. Um, and they did kind of end up looking a little flat, um, a little bit uh, smooth, I guess is the right word. Um, but I don't know, I, I, I don't dislike it. Um, it kind of reminds me of in Animal Crossing, at least the most recent one, that's the only one I've ever played, New Leaf, uh, not New Leaf, uh, shoot, uh, New Horizons, um, where you got the, the book where you can look at all the bugs that you've captured, um, and sort of that style. Um, it, this kind of reminds me of that. Not that that was what I was trying to go for, but um, I, I like it. I think I like, I like how it turned out. Um, so now I'm just trying to do the background. Again, I'm not trying to be fancy. Um, I can't remember how I got this orange. I really like this orange. It's awfully bright, <laughs> so I was trying to work it in. Um, it was a little overwhelming, but I was trying to get that orange in there. Um, I did use the yellow that I used for the highlights um, as one of the colors. Maybe that's how I got the orange, was I took that yellow and I, I messed with it. And threw some gradients in there. Um, when in doubt, throw a gradient in. <laughs> that always has worked for me. Um, I went with like this circle shape. I thought that was just a nice, just a nice round cohesive shape. And I'm done. There it is. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think I passed the challenge in getting some leaf bugs looking like different leaves. And I hope you liked it too. Um, whoever's watching this, this is my second video so far. So if anybody's listening to this, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.